our media madness story. Robin D'Angelo gained national prominence this year for her, her book, White Fragility, about how white people could recognize and make amends for their inherent racism. D'Angelo makes a living as a corporate consultant and public speaker, lecturing other white people about how they are basically evil and always have to repent for the sins that they themselves never committed. But a new investigation from the Free Beacon shows Robin D'Angelo raked in over $12,750 for just a single speaking gig last month at the University of Wisconsin, 70% more than the other keynote speaker who was a black female, author Austin Channing Brown. So when can we expect D'Angelo to give Brown the money that she deserves? With me now is Mike Gonzalez from the Heritage Foundation and the author of The Plot to Change America, How Identity Politics is Dividing the Land of the Free. Hi, Mike. Welcome back. It's great seeing you again. How are you? Good. So can't say I'm too surprised by this. What are some of your thoughts? Do you think D'Angelo will live what she preaches and spread the wealth? No, of course not. Look, D'Angelo and Ibram X. Kendi and all the other members of the consultant class that are making a huge uh huge amount of money out of this grift, their, their, their position is that all unequal cal- outcomes are the result of white racism, or the result of America's systemic racism. Here is a, a, a fine example of Robin D'Angelo making a lot more money, having unequal outcomes with at the other participant who did just as much work and who was, a, who was African-American. Is she willing to tell us that this unequal outcome is the result of systemic racism? Or is she going to tell us that actually she is more sought after, that she did there's a, 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 a supply and demand portion of her salary, which accounts for the fact that she gets paid more? Obviously, that's the, that's the explanation. But they cannot bring themselves to say this. They're anti-capitalist for this reason. Her and Candy and the other consultants say capitalism is awful and we must be eliminated because it results in unequal outcomes. And unequal outcomes are only the result of America's systemic racism. Here's an example where it likely wasn't. She is much more sought after than the other speaker. Is she going to say that? No. But is she going to share the money? No. Exactly. What really gets me as well is that we're supposed to believe D'Angelo and the rest of them that this is such a white supremacist nation full of just, you know, just what it, what is the Biden always see the tiki torch carrying a uh, veins neck uh, neck uh, veins bulging kind of racist and stuff. And if we're supposed to believe that D'Angelo is commanding, you know, large, you know, hefty sums for her speaking gigs, twelve thousand seven hundred fifty dollars just for last month. But sometimes she's rented out for as much as thirty thousand dollars and she seems to be in quite high demand uh, i i can't uh, believe that we're a white supremacist nation that's giving so much money to a woman to come and tell us how racist we are to me that also doesn't make sense you know if you go to uh, her, her, one of her speaker bureaus key speakers she actually can get between 50 and seventy five thousand dollars a pop it's not just twelve thousand that's probably for not just a, a, a one hour webinar, but for a more, you know, engaged speaking engagement. But Kendi as well, Ibram X. Kendi is the same thing. He was just paid twenty thousand dollars for an hour Zoom webinar with by Fairfax County Public Schools. I'm sure that twenty thousand dollars could have gone uh to to, to 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 greater use in buying the, the you know kids lunches or textbooks or, or, or computers. No, they gave Candy twenty thousand dollars. They gave they gave Robin D'Angelo a lot of money. But I have to go back to this because all of them, all of them are socialists. All of them say capitalism is unfair because it, it because it, it, it results in these unequal outcomes. How is she going to explain this to her? It sounds to me, by the way, the way she was hiding from reporters, that she's showing some, shall we call it fragility? <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah, she is. And one thing that, you know, gets me is when we look at this wokeism that's, you know, running amok and infecting our current culture, as you were pointing out earlier, it keeps going back to Marxism and to socialism and to anti-capitalism. Why do you think this uh, racial theory of wokeness and anti-capitalism and Marxism, where do you think this blend and this, uh, you know, how they intertwine, where do you think that comes from? Well, as you know, I've written a couple of books on this. Uh, my, my most recent is The Plot to Change America, which uh, people can get on Amazon, came out in July and explains all of this. 
I am at the same time one of the co-authors of a major heritage paper to come on cultural, um, uh, uh, on, on critical uh, race theory. Critical race theory comes from critical legal theory, and critical legal theory comes from critical theory, which was started by neo-Marxists in Europe and by postmodernists, also Marxists in Europe, in the mid-20th century, in the 1930s to the 1960s. So this, these are communist, these are neo-Marxist ideas. The, the fact that society, especially American society, is divided between classes of the oppressed and the oppressors, and, and we need to completely overhaul society. Americans need to be very careful with this because they have an incredible success. Robin DiAngelo spoke to 184 members of Congress through a webinar held in June. Abram Kendi is being used by the Smithsonian Institution to talk about his his version of anti-racism, which is also Marxist. We we do not need this in America. Mike Gonzalez, is always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot for having me. And congratulations on your success. Thank you so much.